What's up guys, in this video I'm going to give you guys a recap of my Philly International, which I played almost like three weeks ago in Philly, <laughs> obviously. Uh, but before I get into that, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more great chess videos. Alright, so first game I'm playing this guy, Boryagis, and this is the first time I ever played the Sicilian. Um, and you know what happens the first time you ever play an opening, you're like, alright, I know exactly all the variations, I studied hard, whatever he does, I'm going to know exactly what to do. So we play, I, I know all this happening, he goes C4, and I'm like, Roxy Bind. I never studied the Roxy Bind. So first game, right off the bat, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, I mean, you use your principles, you develop, you play fast, or you don't play fast. Honestly, when you're playing a new variation, do not play fast. This is how you lose fast. Um, take your time, make sure you understand. Once you understand, then you make the move. So here, I mean, I get this position, and then I, I realize if I go B takes, Queen d4 is really annoying. So I kind of go into like panic wrestling mode where I'm like, all right, I'm playing a low rated. This guy's about 8900 feet A. So let me just like, uh, um, just keep it easy. Take the queens off. I'm sure at some point I can try to outgrind him. Um, and the things to know in this position are just kind of like get all your pieces out. Don't do anything crazy. I do not want to give up this bishop for this knight. So knight d5 check is always something you have to keep an eye on to make sure it doesn't work. Um, so e5, this, and now I bring the bishop back to keep it, and now I'm going to push on the queen side. That's kind of my plan here. Um, so we get kind of just like, just just moves, and it gets kind of closed up, but now I, ha I see I have this weakness on c5 I can hit. My knight has that easy path to e6, um, and I think uh, this is where I start feeling like, alright, I'm okay here. And then here, once he goes f4, I feel like, okay, now I know I can win this. Because at some point, he's going to have an isolated pawn on e4, and those are not good in the end game. Um, so here I take, I trade off, and now I just make a waiting move. I want to see what he's going to do, and I don't want him to go b4 and kind of like cement his pawn in. Um, and actually a5 ends up being a very, very important move later on. So take, take, and here I'm down to trade everything. The reason why? Isolated pawn. Isolated pawns are good in the middle game, or like they're decent in the middle game, but they're really bad in the end game because they, they, they become huge targets. So take, 96, take, here, and now the key to this end game is outside pass pawn as well as this weakness on c5. So here I go f5, I think f6 and f5 both win, same idea. Um, so if so take, king takes here, 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 and the key here is to t basically take the life out of him, just go king here. Because now, what he's hoping is, okay, I, t I take this pawn and now I get this race and maybe by some miracle I can queen first. But here, I didn't even calculate that because I can just go king d4, and now he's gonna run out of moves. I just go back and forth until he moves and then I take. And now I kind of I get that one extra move, and now he has no chance. Um, also back here, what people are probably wondering is what happens if on passant. If on passant, I go king takes, and now at some point I'm going to go h6 g5, make an outside pass pawn. And he's going to have to come take this pawn, and I'm going to come take this pawn. But when I take this pawn, I'm going to be way closer to these pawns, and that's how I'm going to be going to kind of to win this end game. Um, so pretty pretty. I mean, I guess a solid start. I mean, I had a bad taste in my mouth because I didn't really get a good position out of that, like the Sicilian. But I was like, all right, I'm undefeated in the Sicilian. Let's go on to round two. All right, so round two, I'm playing a grandmaster named Samil something with a C, Mirandi. Um, and fun fact, his nickname is JJ, and I'm like, wait a minute. There's no J's in his name. But he's Turkish, and apparently the C's in Turkey are basically J's. I think there's something like that with Brazil and H&R. But basically, you can call him JJ. So if you ever meet someone from Turkey, you know what to say. All right, so round two, um, I've got a con Sicilian, but this time I'm on, on the white side. And here I'm pretty excited, because whenever I play against Sicilian, I'm pretty happy. Like, they're always fun games, uh, fun to play, a lot of prospects. Um, and I, I got the setup that I kind of play a lot. Um, and here, whenever I get kingside versus kingside, I always want to attack by pushing f4. Scotch Gambit, a bunch of different openings. Um, so I'm getting that ready by going king h1, that way there's no pin on this diagonal. So king h1. Knight f5, take, 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 take. So I lose my, or I get his bishop pair, but then he takes back my bishop pair. Um, and now it's a very interesting position because like the pawn structure is not the best. I have double pawns and isolated pawns, but he has no space and I have really good pieces, or I'm going to, as you will see very soon. So the reason he goes h6 is he wants to stop bishop g5. So if he castles and I go bishop g5, basically I'm just gonna take and then plug up the, the, the light cards in my knight and basically we have a simp bishop versus a nice knight. And you're gonna see this in a lot of openings. Um, you can either get a good knight versus a bad bishop or a, ba or a bad knight versus a good bishop. 
and make sure that doesn't happen to you because those positions suck. So he goes h6, and now I go f4. So when you when you get this kind of position where like you're they've wasted a lot of pawn moves, you're fully developed, you really want to think open up and attack. Um, so here f4 is kind of the spirit of the position. So this. I could take this pawn, but for some reason I was like, all right, I'm gonna play for a win, and I don't wanna trade off into an end game where you can hold. <laughs> You're gonna see how that bites me later. Um, even here, I can trade off this. Uh, yeah, okay, so basically I'm trying to like maneuver on this king side and find a way to break through. And here I think I find it. So rook takes, take, and if he goes pawn take, oh sorry, bishop takes, Queen e3, and I was like, oh my god, I think I'm, I might be winning here, because I have this pin, f6 is very strong, and he, he finds some very nice moves. So f6, and the idea is if he goes g takes, now his king is opened up, and I think I can win this. But he goes take, basically what he does is he just trades off and simplifies. And this is going to kind of highlight a problem where, like, he was playing very fast and just making kind of simple moves, and I was playing very slow, trying to find the perfect moves. And at some point, he survived. Um, and I really didn't have anything. So now it's just like, almost like I'm out of energy. Like I'm, I'm low on time, this is gonna really make it hard for me later on. If you think about fighting, a lot of times like people will burn themselves out trying to get a finish or trying to get a choke, and then the guy survives, and then they realize like I have nothing left. And it's the same kind of idea where like, I didn't have any time, the other the people fighters don't have enough energy. So queen f4, queen f3, and I was like, okay, this has to be good for me. Like this king is wide open, if I get my queen to g7, which, it's not gonna happen, but always in our head we're like, all right, some way this is gonna happen. Um, there'd be checkmate. So here now I start playing aggressive, and this is actually where I kind of start panicking almost, because now he's attacking this pawn. I could take here, but then he takes here, um, and he's gonna get this outside pass pawn. I'm like, oh, I don't want to deal, deal with that. So this would have been dangerous, but also I don't want queen e2 or queen e3 in trading, because then this pawn is gonna fall. So I have to start playing aggressive here. So h4, take, take, and I'm like, all right, I can't lose this. Come on, f4, and now I'm up a pawn. And this is a very important idea in games where it's like, you have to stay active. Because if he comes king here, it takes and takes, like I have, I'm now be down a pawn. And I cannot trade off rooks because you can never go into king upon endgame down a pawn. Honestly, that hurts me the most when I see that happen. Um, so rook g4, king g6, and you gotta keep attacking. Rook d4 here, and then I'm just trying to trade and simplify at this point. Because um, if I trade off these two pawns for this pawn, it's still a draw. Because I can just get under, uh, very easy to, to hold. Um, so I push, and this is actually a very fatal mistake. Not even that it was a mistake, it's still a draw here, but psychologically it gets a lot harder after this. So I go c5, and now he goes rook d2. And the problem here is if he takes this, he guards this pawn, but he's also starting push, push, and then rook check and queen. Um, so what I needed to do was here go rook a7. This is going to keep his rook tied down to this pawn, and now I can kind of push these at free will. Because um, he can never really take them, and if his rook moves, I take this. And I can trade these two for this, so I'm be more than happy to uh, to trade it. But the key is now his rook's tied. But what happens is his rook gets free, I had to sack a pawn, and it's still a draw because I mean, all I have to do is hold. And here is the fatal mistake. Because after rook h7, he goes pawn push, I have to go here, and now he has rook c1. And it's like, okay, you just take the pawn, what's the problem? But now I, he takes this, and the problem is now my king is just watching from the outside. My king is stuck, it's cut off, and I mean, I play a couple of moves, but I quickly go into resign here. Now the way to draw here was to go um, c7. So this, this, and now rook here. Remember, I need to take this pawn, or I can keep this pawn if my king's here. So this, here, here, and now this is a draw, because I can just move back and forth. Just king back and forth, and at some point, like I will win these pawns, and it will be a draw. So this is kind of a heartbreaking round, because um, I knew like I had the draw, and he always better. Even after the game, he was like, man, you were so much better. Um, I wanted to offer a draw, but my position was so bad. Um, and losing these games, the toughest part about it is now you have a must game, not a must win game, but a game that you pretty much have to win next round. Whereas if I draw this, I'm gonna play up again, and for norms, or for rating, or if, even for good results, you wanna keep playing up, and you wanna keep getting points. In open tournaments, the highest level, the biggest thing is do not lose. Find any way to avoid losing. All right, so now we're gonna go into round three. All right, so round three was definitely an interesting round. Um, my second game in the Sicilian, and you're gonna know exactly what's about to happen. So this, this, all normal stuff. Like this is exactly what I prep, and then he goes c4. I'm like again, really? All of the training games, all the games online I played, nobody went c4, 
and now two games in the tournament, my first two games in Sicilian, I go in C4. So here I'm, I'm a little shook, but like, honestly, it's, it's not an excuse. Like, I'm doing fine here. And then here he, he plays this very nice move, and I think this guy is like Armenian um, and trained by Jacobian. So he's very good. Fortunately, he's underrated. He's, he's rating like 2100. And he plays knight d5. I'm like, whoa, I did not see that move. Um, and the reason it works is because of this line of fire. Um, if I take pawn takes, and now he's going to win the bishop, he gets the bishop pair, and these bishops are really strong. He's going to get this 2 1 1 on the outside, and I don't want to have to deal with that. So here, I have to go queen d7, and even here, like, I was like, mm, at least take my bishop and stuff. But he takes this, and he goes c5. Like, he plays very, very well. Queen c7, bishop c5. And now I got to get some counterplay. So I start attacking things. Um, and you're going to see a little bit soon, like, I actually do a pretty good job getting some counterplay. Um, now, he's got his two pawns, and I've got my two pawns. The problem is, like, his position is now very loose. My king is definitely weaker than his, especially with my king on a light square, and, he's, and he has a light square bishop. Um, and here is, this is when kind of everything, like, falls apart. You see there's, like, there's a pin here. There's this potential diagonal is very dangerous, as well as, like, all these pawns are hanging. So, as well as this line of fire here, with the bishop here and attacking the rook. Now here, I saw this, I went queen c2, and I missed, I think, queen g3. Queen g3, and now I'm just kind of cooked. Like, uh, actually, what I really missed was the rook e7, take, take, and this checkmate back here. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. Um, so I go rook f8, and even here, I'm a, maybe I still have a chance. Because if he takes, I take king g1, and I can go pawn push, and at least I have these connected pass pawns. And these can be a little bit dangerous. But the problem is, he, he literally plays it perfectly. Like check, check, and then rook f6. And not only is he just defending the bishop, defending checkmate, I'm also getting checkmated after rook f4 here in g3. So this game <laughs> definitely hurt. And I almost had like a hangover from the second game where it was like, man, I should have drawn that game. Now I'm playing down, and now I'm getting tortured. It's like everything's kind of like circling in your head. Um, and after this game, I was like, I was kind of shook. I was like, man, I'm one out of three. I'm playing down. I spent all this money coming here. Like, what am I going to do? I need to, like, buckle down and play very, very well. And you're going to see that God sends an answered prayer <laughs> the next round. All right. So before the game, I'm like, oh, God, please, I need to win. I cannot lose again. If I lose again, it's over. Basically, I wasted all my money, all my time. And, like, what am I going to do? So I go to round four, and, and guess who I'm playing? playing my homie Eugene United. And before this game, like, we kind of knew each other, but we didn't really know each other. And after this game, like, this is literally, like, the turning point of my tournament. I became homies with Eugene, and I don't think I, I... I didn't lose a game for, I think, at least nine more rounds after this, which is, like, insane. Like, uh, I had the, the nicest undefeated streak. And it was actually cracked by Ben Feingold in the next tournament. So, we get a Rosalimo, and all of this... Like, this is all theory. Always take on c6. Easiest way to play. Um, and he goes in for the knight h6 line. And I know the idea is just take the center and just chill. The knight on h6 is kind of weird. And it's almost, like he's almost playing like a King's Indian setup. Where he just makes a bunch of weird pawn moves. And, like, we kind of both wait. So this, 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 and d6. Just, and I, remember, never let them go bishop g4 and take this. They always want to trade this off. And this makes this pawn a lot weaker. So remember the Rosalimo, when you can, go h3. Um, and he goes c5. And c5, like, I'm really excited. Because I think it's just a very easy position for white to play. So take, take, and queen c2. And now it's just like all these pawns are loose. Um, and I mean, I always have ideas of taking here. And it's just very easy development for white. So he gives me a pawn. F5, this. And then now it gets just a little bit wild for him. And kind of the cool tactic. Maybe not cool tactic. But is rook d7. Because now my idea is just rook takes pawn checkmate. The only thing he can do is go queen takes f2. And I saw this, and I'm actually kind of annoyed by this move, because it's like, if he doesn't have this, it's over. And if he has this, all that he gets is a better endgame. He can sack the queen for a pawn, or the, and I get a better endgame. So take, check, king g3. There's some like cool lines where the rook takes pawn on b2, but I think just king e1. And now I defend everything, and there's still checkmate threats. Um, so bishop check, king here, take, take here. And then this is actually just a pretty trivial uh, endgame to win. I'm up three pawns, and... Everything is really weak for him. And then this, boom, and it's lost. So this was a very, very necessary game. Uh, shout out to Eugene, my homie, my boy. Thank you for this, because if I didn't have this, if I had lost this game, 
I feel like my life <laughs> would be different right now. Every once in a while, there's moments that have, like, moments are just, like, battles that you have to fight, where if you lose, like, your life is going all the way this way, and if you win, your life can go all the way that way. And this is literally, like, one of these moments. All right, so this is round five, and right now I'm at two out of four. So these are still, like, must-win games, or at least I can't lose these games, otherwise I'm in big trouble. So I'm, in, I'm still taking this seriously. This guy is about 2,100, um, and my, my, my roommate tells me, like, this guy's very solid, so just get ready for kind of a solid game if you can attack him. So knight h3. Knight h3 used to be, like, the bane of my existence. Like, I actually, like, quit this line for a while because of knight h3, and I just, like, lost every game I played. Um, and the key is, actually, not bishop d7 here, but at some point, when they go bishop f4, you need to go bishop e7. Keep the pieces over here, and that way you get g5 with tempo. Um, and that's kind of my idea in this. Um, so now here I go a5 just to get some space, just to stop here. At some point, maybe a4. Um, and with the stone wall, like, something you learn, and I, I have this book by Sedlak, that is, is a very nice book. It's like, there's no rush. Like, you have plenty of time. Um, you're going to basically, like, set up everything and then just wait for your moment. Um, so you don't want to just launch everything super fast, so just a5, knight e8, and then here I go g5, which is a very, I think, important idea in these variations. I'm not saying that g5 is the right time here, but I think, like, I got a very nice, easy position to play. Like, you develop all your pieces. This is when things get a little bit funny, but pretty much I'm just making moves. Um, and then here, like, even here I feel good. Or I should not take an f4. For some reason, I misjudged that g takes is okay. I was like, wait, he's got the open g file. I got the open g file. I'll put my rook here and checkmate him. But it's not so easy because I can't get my pieces out so fast. So here, probably better is just rook c8, um, develop these pieces, and then look for kind of a breakthrough. Like rook c8, bishop c5, and at some point I'll take here. Because if he takes, it's always good for me. So why take now? So a lot of times when you're playing chess, you want to think, like, why am I taking now? Should I take now or should I take later? Should I check now or should, should I check later? Should I attack this piece now or should I attack this piece later? These are things like every move you make should have a very strong defense for why you're doing this. And I didn't. <laughs> so this, bishop c5, a4. Um, the reason he can't take is as I, as I, I take on e3, so queen here. And then here I have this, like, I'm getting a little bit low on time, and I'm like, man, I gotta play active. Because if he blockades everything, I'm used to, like, this bishop is bad, this bishop really doesn't do anything. So I'm like, alright, I have to open up the position, it's worth a pawn. So here, d4, which I think is a very nice move, especially, like, with what happened after. Now here, you're like an idiot. Forgot knight f3. I thought, okay, here, and then I, I have all this stuff. Still, I think, very nice variation, and I have this kind of bailout into an endgame. So bishop takes pawn, take, check, here, take. And then here, I'm, like, a tiny bit nervous, but I'm like, no, nah, he doesn't have enough pieces to checkmate me here. Like, you kind of just bring your pieces out. Um, it's, only, it's only two rooks in a knight. Like, you can't mate with that. So h6, here actually rook b3 was really strong, and the idea is I can keep these guys, and I mean, it, honestly, it's kind of scary, but I, mean, I just don't mess with outside pass pawn. So computer likes this, but uh, like I said, I just do not want to mess with outside pass pawn. So h6, this, here, here, and then here it's like, hmm, do I take the draw or should I play for the win? And I mean, coming off, like, losing to a 2100 with black, um... And just not losing, and like, I don't really know this position. Like I was like, e6 is weak, and then h6 is weak, and his f4 and h8 3 pawn are weak. So here I was like, all right, I'm black, let me take a draw, and uh, remember, the, the big goal is to not lose. And I was never really better better here, so it's not like I'm chasing something. I always make, maybe I was equal, maybe a little bit worse, which is why I was like, all right, it's okay to take a draw here. Um, this is a better strategy if you haven't lost, especially early on. Um, Accumulate those draws and get those wins with white. That's kind of like what I've learned from these tournaments. If you can win with black, obviously great. Um, if you can draw with black, also kind of great though. Like sometimes you just gotta equalize, and that's why here I took the draw. And I was like, all right, let's move on. And just the more I play these positions, the more I'll know because these are very like interesting positions. There's nothing like super like you did this wrong, you did that wrong. Like this is like there was a lot of strategy, a lot of things. The more I play it, the more I get used to it, the be the better the results will be. So now two and a half out of five, four more games, and really here at this point I need to win out. If I don't win out, like there's no way I get a norm or money. So we're gonna go on to round six. All right. So now round six, I'm playing this like 1800, and I'm like, how am I playing an 1800 in the top section with not even that terrible score, two and a half out of five? And when you get these like uh, super loaded guys, you're always like, is this guy good? Cause like he 
he has the same amount of points, so he must have beaten some people. Um, and it was this little kid, so it was like, all right, I guess that, I'm gonna definitely take it seriously. And then he played a Night Orf, and I was like, all right, it's time to party. I love playing the Night Orf. So he plays his early B5 line, which is honestly like one of the more tricky lines. Like, Bishop E7 is the easiest. Knight D7 is, I think, pretty straightforward, but B5 is just like chaos. And I actually played a match yesterday with my friends, and it was like, it's so hard to remember everything. So queen f3, queen c7, bishop g5, this is all normal. And here there's a bunch of ideas with like take and then like e5, like this. Like this is this is one of the traps that I always like. Um, but I think here there's like Shabalov games with like take and then e5. And then all these kind of like you win the rook is just you have to know what to do. So I didn't know it yet. I'm not, <laughs> I keep saying this. I still have a lot of work to do to memorize everything and know everything, blah, blah, blah. Um, so here I kind of just played safe with h4. And then after knight c4, I'm like, thank you, God. Because this guy was li literally playing it all very well. He navigated all the traps, did nothing wrong. And then he went knight c4. And then here's where he falls for it, knight takes b5. And after this, like, I should just be completely winning. Like, completely, completely winning. But it gets a little bit tricky, just a little bit. So here, I think queen c7 is probably better. Um, get a bit, actually, I don't know if it's better, because I get back one of the pawns, so it's not so simple. So, I mean, I, I kind of play just solid, f3. And here he could have gone bishop a6, and what I thought was I had queen c7, but this and my queen's getting trapped. Like I could still take an e6 and have advantage, but now I'm just I'm, now I'm down a piece for like four pawns or three pawns. And I don't know if that's the direction we want to go. Like when you're winning just like completely no counterplay for your opponent, you don't want to go into variations where your opponent starts getting counterplay because it's like now they're getting more excited, they get a little momentum, and now they have a chance. Um, so you really want to like take all life out of your opponent. So this, here, and now I just start attacking, pretty normal stuff. Um, and you, you have to be a little bit careful here. Like, he's down two pawns, but those two pawns are in front of my king. So we get, that means he has two open files at my king. So you gotta be careful. And now here, it's like h6 is a very important move. Because h6, bishop f8, and now the bishop is always tied down. You cannot use this bishop in the attack. Oops. But instead of h6, if I go like knight takes d5, like, it's like it's just a little bit iffy like okay yeah, this is this is winning but you got to be careful so anytime you can push your opponent's pieces back make them useless do that first it's like those little extra moves that take the life out of your opponent will make it way easier for you to win and that's another thing i kind of saw in this tournament just like one move makes a very big difference so h6 this and now it's um cruise control like i have nothing to worry about here here and then it's just a matter of time like queen d3 Queen b4. I mean, he's still trying to sack stuff. But take bishop d4. And here, I'm not even taking that pawn. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good, man. Let's trade. I'm going to win this endgame. I already know since I'm the higher rated. And probably I have more endgame experience. If it was equal, I would have a chance. If I'm up a pawn, I'm almost always winning. If I'm up two pawns, that's a lock. That's a lock for sure. So this, this. And now he's like, I, he literally cannot trade queens. Because he knows he's going to lose. But this is even like, probably even worse. This, this, this. And then kind of everything goes. So I got that winning position early on, but you still have to navigate these positions. And a lot of times at the lower levels, you see these epic comebacks where it's like, how did that guy come back? And it's like, don't give them, don't risk anything. Don't move your pieces backwards. Move their pieces backwards. And if you can, suck the life out of them, like trade pieces. Take away their hope. Because as you trade more and more and more, you can literally see the hope leave their eyes trade by trade by trade. Don't panic trade, but definitely try to trade. All right, so going to this game, now I have three and a half out of six. I'm doing better, and I'm starting to have some confidence. Like I'm, I'm getting closer to the, the top boards. One, two. I've, I haven't lost a couple games, um, and now it's time to choose the opening after e4, e5. And I go after e4, and I go with e5. So funny story, funny metaphor. Um, I played e5 my whole life. E5 was like the girl that I dated forever for years, and like it was great. Like I was beating GMs. I was doing really well. Like I don't even know why I stopped playing e5. And I started playing e6, the French. And I tried so hard, so hard to make it work with the French. Like, I did everything I can. I always was positive. And it just didn't work out. I was getting checkmated on the king side. And that's just like, that's not me. So now I had to break up with the French. And I tried the Sicilian. Now the Sicilian, like, I think there's a lot there. But I can't trust the Sicilian yet. I don't know it well. I don't know all the ins and outs of it. So now I'm going to this round, and I know he plays e4, and I'm like, man, what do I do? Do I go with the French, the girl that I clearly could not make things work with? Do I go with the Sicilian, the girl I don't know? 
if I go back to E5, the girl where it was like, it was perfect. Like, I did every, like, I don't even know. Like, why did I stop? And I go back to E5. And you're going to see, like, it kind of changed my tournament and kind of, like, maybe in my life. Like, E5 has been really good to me. Um, so very, like, this is one of those decisions where you're like, I felt really good about it. Um, so E4, E5. And kind of the, e with, the key with E5 is you just have enough space. Like, back in the day, I was not okay with endgames. I was not okay with drawing. Now I've learned, like, you have to be okay with those things, especially as black. And that's why E5, I think, is, is, is just probably just better. Sicilian, I think, has a lot of upside, for sure. Um, but right now, I'm back with E5, and we're having a good time. All right, so A4, Bishop G4, and now I'm like, all right, let's party. This is, like, this is the chess that I want to play. I want to checkmate you. And I go H5. I'm like, all right, come on. Let's, 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 let's have some fun. Now, H5, a little sketch, but it's okay. Um, when you play aggressive, when you play, like, very loose... I would say like eight out of ten times you do not make all the perfect moves but the fact that you have the pressure the fact that you're playing aggressive a lot of times that is just gonna get to your opponent on top of that they're gonna get very low on time so this guy Merrick who literally by move eight or move nine he had like 20 minutes left like insane time pressure because he's got to like deal with all the pressure coming at him so a lot of times like if you can get these attacking positions like there's a lot of like other pros to it like the time advantage the psycho psychological advantage so I go G5. Um, I think there's some different ways to play here, um, but I'm pretty happy with, with kind of what happened here. Now Bishop takes H3, that's some like weird, crazy computer lines with like Rook G8 or just move the Queen, give it the Pawn. But uh, this seems pretty nice. So like F6, Knight takes, take, and then take. And now it's like, yes, I'm down a piece for I think a Pawn, what, 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 6, 7 for a Pawn. But I've got a lot of prospects here. And his king is wide open, and on top of that, he's low on time, just to make things better. So check, c6, and then here. And then he almost feels like he has to give back material. Because um, also at bishop a4, I was ready to go b5. And yeah, now I can't really castle, but his king is definitely weaker than mine. And I think I can go castle kingside if I ever need to, and he doesn't have this bishop. So he goes with uh, b takes c6, king f1, and now it's time to have some fun. Um, now when you get these positions, they're not like so clear, especially when you're playing like decent competition. They will make sure that they don't lose. So now it's up to you to beat them. So if you don't beat them, they will not lose, if that makes sense. So you gotta start opening them up and just get all your pieces in, which is very important. And I honestly take free stuff if it's there, but make sure you don't lose your attack. So G3, and now here like, I lost, I mean we trade our rooks, but look at this king, look at this pawn. Um, remember when pawns are very far advanced, it's almost like they're worth they're up. You're, it's almost like you're up a piece. So rook d8. I was thinking castle and queenside, but I was scared of rook takes pawn. Though computer does like castle queenside better because my king is safer. But rook d8 is okay. And here he misses this tactic. So knight b4. If he takes, I'm gonna queen. Um, and this is like all kinds of winning. So this take with check. King c1. I think take here because he can't block with the knight because his queen goes. And here I mean I'm only up a pawn. But his king's getting very compromised. I can always, obviously always win bottom to that. And here he knew like there was no way he could play this. So he goes with uh, king b3. Knight takes pawn. This here. Now I have to be a little bit careful because there's a lot of checks. But the key move here is to queen. Because if he if I queen, if he, and, he, and he takes, let's say take. Now I can take here and all of a sudden he's zero checks. Zero checks and now he's getting checkmated. So this is a very, very, very important defensive move. I think other moves won, but this is just the easiest way for it to happen. So check, and now I block with the queen. And not only do I block with the queen, I have the discover attack. So this, this, and look at this king. With his two wives, rook, just having the time of his life. He literally didn't move the whole game. That <laughs> king did not move a single square the whole game. And here he is with two queens, about to checkmate his opponent. And just like, man, life is good. Life is good. So this was... This is where I really start getting confidence. Like, this game kind of, like, Eugene gave me, put me on the right track, but this game got me, like, all right, now I can kind of win. Um, and you're going to see the next two games, like, it only goes up and up for sure. All right, so round eight. <clears throat> now I have a pretty decent score. Um, four and a half out of seven. And I'm actually, like, at one of the top boards. Um, and I'm playing with my homies, Alex Katz. So funny story about this. Uh, most nights, it would be me, Eugene, and Alex. And then Atulia. And we would go to this bar called McGillan's and we'd drink beer and watch the Hawks play. Um, so round four, if you guys remember, I beat Eugene. 
and now I'm playing the second homie, <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, Alex. So we get a Petrov, e4, e5, uh, and I love this line knight c4 just because it makes it interesting. Everything else in the Petrov just gets really boring and beat dead. Knight c4, it's like, I mean, it's just like black has to be careful, otherwise he's going to get a tough position. Um, so just normal stuff, and kind of the difference here is there's no symmetry. When there's symmetry, chess gets really boring. It's like, oh, you, I do this, you do the same thing, so what do we do? But here I have a knight on e3 and I have double pawns here. So at some point I can go c4 take and then c4 again. Or I can try to use this knight to get the bishop pair. So f5, and I've seen this idea before, and I know that here, like, g4 is very important. Um, now I play queen e2 first, but actually here g4 is more critical. This, this, and then now queen takes g4. And it looks a little bit loose for white, but he's actually the one attacking and blocks the one taking it. Um, so I go queen e2, queen f6, and now g4. So g4, g6, and then g5. So also another thing with g4 is I know I'm playing someone who plays the Petra. So they are not trying to go into a slugfest. So they're not going to take here and start getting into all these wild exchanges. So I know g4, he's going to go g6 pretty much. Because that just fits like the, the flow of the position and the personality. So these are things that you want to think about when you're playing different opponents. Just like, what would they, um, what would they do? So g6, g5, queen f7, and now is when I start kind of like bringing all the pieces in, putting the pressure. Like there's no rush to kind of push everything. Um, I want to get all my pieces out and wait for the right moment. So this, this, here, here, and then here's actually, I, I, I play a little bit slow. I should be targeting d5. I should be going like queen g2, or bishop, get the bishop here, attack this, um, and that would have been a lot better. But what I do is maybe give him a little bit too much time and let him go for this idea. And I, <laughs> I guess this is where it backfired. I was like, he's playing the Petrov. He's not going to just give me a pawn uh, for counterplay. But the thing is, I push him to a corner. Because if he doesn't do this, what else does he do? So it's almost like he has to do it. And knowing that, I should not allow that. I think what I can do earlier is maybe go like a4 and stuff. Just to prevent all this, these shenanigans. So anyway, like I, I win the pawn. But now it starts getting like really weird. Like it's like... I'm, I'm up a pawn, but his pieces and like, like the, the bishop's useless. He's got a lot of targets. It's kind of dangerous. So here what I do is I kind of try to simplify and honestly, like, I lose my way. Like, this is where, like, now I'm like, oh my god. Because I see this bishop d7 idea, and I'm like, okay, he just doesn't take, and what do I have? But I almost feel pushed into it. Um, so bishop e6 check, take, and now he goes rook e8, and I, I panic for a second because I'm like, I didn't see this. I'm like, all right, I can just go rook c1, we good. So this, take, take, and then I have this beautiful move, bishop e6. Because now if he takes, I have pawn push check, with his bishop, and I take the rook, and I'm getting all these checkmates. Um, and then this, and then this, is like, actually it's unfortunate, because he misses queen b7 check. So queen b7, and then like, is just checkmate, his main key. Um, either pawn push, or queen f7, just gg. He had some like, really, really crazy de defense here, like after bishop b6, like knight a4, and then like, some wild stuff. Um, but the, really the critical, the kind of the critical takeaway from this game is here, like, do not play this so slow. Like, you got to know when you're invincible and when you're not. So probably here, like, a4, queen f3, try to get this bishop to attack this this d5 pawn. Now, this is his weakness. Isolated pawn, um, uh, and that's kind of what I should do here. But after this game, like, I'm now I'm, like, feeling really good. Five and a half out of, out of, out of eight. So, like, already tied for my highest score, um, and the McGillan's curse is real. <laughs> All right. So now I've made it to round nine. In round nine, I'm actually on board number three, playing Grandmaster Zavan Andreasen, who not only does he have a really cool name and a really cool chain, he's also 2570 FIDE and over 2700 rated USCF. So one of the highest rated people I've ever played in my life, and he's playing E4, and I'm like, is he gonna play D4, or is he gonna play Knight F3? And he, he pulls up with E4, and I'm like, I mean, who am I gonna go with? The girl I tried to make work where it didn't, the girl I don't know, or the girl who just won me my last game. And I go with e5. Man. So, I mean, if, if e5 draws or wins here, I mean, we're set for life. There's no there's no changing this. So knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, d3, and, okay, here's the next thing. In my head, I'm like, all right, I'm going to castle queen side. I'm going to try to checkmate him. That's my game plan. Castle queen side and try to checkmate. And we always laugh at people, like especially when fighters have a game plan that'll win and they don't do it. I'm like, what an idiot. Why would he do that? And guess who, instead of casting queenside, castles kingside. In my head, I'm like, yeah, I can do this. I'll just outplay him in the middle game. Like, I can do that kingside or queenside. It doesn't matter. 
but I have a path to victory. Why am I not following my plan? This is going to be something you see in a lot of videos, and something that I really want to fix for myself. Because it's like, you laugh at people who like, it happens to them, and you're like, what an idiot. But then you do it, and you're like, what an idiot. Like, how, how did I let that happen to myself? So castle, bishop g4, also not the best move. And then d5. d5, this is a trap I've fallen for, and people have fallen into when I played them. The idea is if take, take, knight g3, bishop g6, d4, I can't take because he takes on e8 and I lose the piece. And the second, the second I played d5, I saw that. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. It's move 10. And I'm already like lost against the, one of the highest rated players I've ever played. Why, why would you lose this early? So take, take, boom, boom. And now, now I'm on skates. i got to figure out some way to survive this. So I go knight b6. I'm like, okay, if I'm going to do it, so now he has to take, take, he's up a pawn, but at least I get the queens off, and he's got some double pawns. I've got an isolated pawn, so not great. But now the key is I can go knight a4. So knight a4, I'm hitting this pawn, so obviously he has knight e4. And now bishop g6, hitting the knight. Now if the knight moves, I get this pawn, so he has to go knight d2. And now I go rook d8, and all of a sudden, it's like I'm down a pawn, but look at his pieces and look at mine. If his knight moves, he loses the pawn. If this knight moves, he loses the knight. And if this knight moves, he loses the rook. The bishop can't move, the pawn can't move, because then I take the knight. He is like, he's effectively frozen, out of nowhere. Like, he should have had a completely winning position, and now it's like not so clear. So I go rook d3, because of b3, I want to take on c3. So when he goes here, I go rook here. Um, and now, I think the idea is I want to take, and then take on c5. So he goes f3, and I take. Now he can't go rook takes, because then I take on c5, so he goes pawn takes. So now here, I mean, for a split second, I'm like, oh, I, I, like he, he literally has no moves. Like, how is he going to lose pieces? And he goes rook b1, and I'm like, wow, how did I not see that? The rook, the rook guards this pawn, and other bishop can move. So now I have to think, okay, what piece is not really doing anything, and how do I make it better? So I, 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 I decide this knight. This knight can be improved. This rook, I don't know if I want to eat here or here. Probably here. But um, the knight, first, I'm going to do this maneuver to e6. That way, he's still tied down to c5. If either of these pieces move, I get this pawn. So king here, rook here. And here, I was a little bit surprised by like him like making it kind of easy on me. And now here, like an idiot, I could have just gone rook e3. Rook e3, and now I'm actually, like, I'm doing well. Like, I have a good position. Uh, like, even chances of winning. But I go rook d 5 And this is another mistake that I see. Like, when people are losing for so long, they don't find ways they can win because they don't even believe it exists. So when you're when you're down, when you're losing, or when you're getting attacked, don't forget to look for counterattacks. Don't forget to look for ways that you can make it hard for your opponent. Because if you don't, they're just going to eventually break you. So I take... Because if I go b6... This pawn is very dangerous. There's a lot of variations. He goes like here, here, and I don't want to deal with that. So b takes c6 here, knight c5, rook takes. Um, and this endgame is still tough. It's like somehow I made it equal pawns, but I got the double pawns. He's got this. I mean, this pawn's kind of weak. Um, so g4, g5. So now I'm just kind of like making moves. I don't want his pawn to get so deep to like e7. Because then if I ever move, I'm going to just be losing because he queens. So I blockade it with the king. And then here. Now here's when things get interesting. So take, rook takes, here, and I go rook f5. I mean, here I'm just trying to trade off and simplify. And we get this position where it's like, I'm down a pawn. This pawn is weak, though. If I can trade off this for this, I should be able to draw. Because I, I block it here, and he doesn't have enough over here to win. So this, rook here, and remember, active defense. You have to be doing things. Like you have to, like, actively try to attack things. So this, here, and the key is I attack this pawn, and now when he goes for this, I can trade off this pawn. And this is what kind of, like, really 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 helps me in this position because after this like it's actually pretty easy to draw take take here and he does have up two pawns but one they're not connected and his king is all the way out here so it's pretty easy for my king and my rook to kind of corral everything now the last thing the very last thing and almost like a funny story in this position is like do not take on a6 if you take on a6 it's like heart it's a heartbreak after like so many perfect moves just take rook check and now you just lose your rook so I go king c6, he goes here, and then I go king b6, and I'm like, draw. Like, I barely say it, and he says nothing. And he goes rook b8, <laughs> and then I go king a7, and I'm like, draw. A little bit louder, he says nothing. He goes rook f8, and then I <laughs> obviously I don't go king takes. I go rook takes pawn, and then he's like, draw. And I'm like, all right, yeah, 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 draw, draw. <laughs> so obviously, like, a very, very nice result after the start. I mean, sometimes a draw against a high rate player isn't the best because you were winning but here I was getting destroyed the whole time so after this game like confidence is literally skyrocketing I'm like man I can do anything 
if I just drop, drew a losing position against like one of the best players in the country, like, what can I not do? Um, so of this tournament, of the recap, I would give myself like an A-, minus, like especially factoring the slow start, the one out of three, um, and then just having the will to come back and score six out of nine, which is my personal best, the highest I've ever scored in a big major chess tournament. So pretty happy with this, tor with this tournament. A couple of results could have been better. I think the slow start hurt a lot. The draw or the, the round two loss against the GM hurt a lot. But just the will to fight back, to find a way to kind of just like make the most of this tournament was, I think, what got this tournament A minus. Definitely what I want to work on is sticking to the game plan, um, not missing things from my opponent, finding better defense. Um, but as I can do better with those things, I think good things will happen. So very, very happy with this, this tournament. And hope you guys enjoy the recap and hope you guys were entertained.